Hey guys, so I had a video request. I don't always get to do the request, especially this soon, but I thought this was a real good idea because I don't have a video on this. Somebody wanted to want me to make a video on how to adjust uh, an 8 horsepower carburetor. And this is a 1996 Model 19 8 horsepower flathead with the updraft carburetor. To help show you better, I got a brand new carburetor right here, it's never been used. And I'm going to show you all the parts on it here a little bit better. And these are called updraft carburetors because the air gets pulled in and it's pulled up through the carburetor. They're good carburetors, a lot of people have trouble with them. They're bad about the float sticking. And as you can see, this one's seeping gas around here. It's actually designed to do that, believe it or not. There's like a vent built in on here and there's really nothing you can do about that. But this is the, what this carburetor looks like off the motor. You get three adjustments on these. And I like to compare these to your one piece flow jet carburetors, like it was one of a vertical shaft 12 horsepower, very common carburetor. But uh, it's basically the same carburetor in a different format. And this video is going to apply to all three updraft carburetors. This is the mid size. You have a smaller one, like you see here on this Model 6, and you have a larger one that's found on the bigger ones. All the adjustments are the same, they all adjust in the same. But your first screw you'll notice is right here on your throttle plate this is your idle speed adjustment most small engines are designed to idle between 12 and 1800 rpm usually 1800 so this is what sets your idle speed this is your choke obviously then right here is your idle mixture adjustment screw down here is your main slash high side adjustment screw now general rule of thumb either a brand new carburetor or one you just rebuilt or cleaned you want to screw this in usually preferably by hand if you tighten it too much you're going to damage the needle and the jet you screw it in until it just bottoms out and you back it out one and a half turns maybe two depends on the motor I usually start one and a half for this screw and this screw that usually gets the motor running it ain't going to run perfect it ain't going to run smooth usually but it'll get it running and once you do that, you can do your final adjustment. The reason I was comparing this to this carburetor, if you're more used to this carburetor, but you're new to this one, uh, I'm going to show you how you just transfer your uh, adjustments over. And this is your idle speed adjustment here. Your uh, low side or idle mixture screw. And your high side main screw down here. So this right here be right here and your idle mixture is right here and your main is down here it's a very similar carburetor it just looks 100 percent different it's made different but it actually works about the same but you only see these and there's two sizes of these too you only see these on the vertical shaft motors i always wanted to make an adapter plate and mount one of these on there i don't see why it couldn't be done because it ain't going to stick out no more than your air filter is. That's something I like to do eventually just to see how well it would run with one of them. But uh, I already got the motor warmed up. And it's, it's tuned perfect right now. You couldn't get it any better. And this one has the kill switch built in in your throttle control. And sometimes it wants to bounce over and shut off. So I might decide to unhook that wire until I get it to get the video done. And there is no screw for the high side RPM, like your maximum govern speed. You have to bend the tab on the spring to adjust it. We'll talk more about it later.
Well, as you can see, I adjusted this out until it started smoking. That means it's too rich. I'm going to turn it back in until it smooths out. And if you keep turning it, you'll get it too lean. It'll start running rough and start popping. You just got to find the right middle right in between it. And uh, if you run it full throttle and you get a throttle down and it just stumbles and stalls, usually your idle is too lean. You just turn this out just a little bit until it quits doing that. If you see black smoke when it's idling, you get this out too far and just bring it in. Then when you throttle up real quick, you shouldn't see but maybe just a little tiny puff of black smoke when you throttle it up. If you see a whole lot, then this is usually set too rich here. But you just have to usually go back and forth on it because once you get this set, because if you set your idle first, then you go back and do this, then your idle is going to be messed up if you have to adjust this. So this feeds off of the output of this circuit. It's kind of confusing how it works, but that's it. And then, like I said, if you got a tack, which will be another video I put up, you want to adjust this until the engine's idling right at 1800. When you throttle it up all the way, it should be right at 3600, give or take 1 to 200 RPMs. Okay, now looking behind the throttle control bracket here, you'll see it at arm swinging here with the adjustment here at the bottom. This is the tab I was referring to. If it's not running fast enough at full throttle, you can take a pair of needle nose in here and just bend that tab down. It puts more tension on that spring. You see right now I got it bent up because this one was running way too fast. That's the only way I could get it to throttle down correctly. The spring hooks on that top up here. It'll be a little hole. I can't really show you with the bracket installed on the motor. But there's a little hole right on the end of where the throttle linkage connects to. You can just barely see it. You can just barely see it right here. This is your linkage right here. The first piece you see and the spring hooks directly behind it on the hole. There may be some motors will have like four or five holes on that. It just depends on where it was set from the factory. You can sometimes adjust the spring tension by just putting it on a different hole instead of bending that tab. It just depends on the engine. But usually on one of these like this you can adjust it just by bending that tab. It's the easiest and fastest way of doing it. And since it's in the view here, this little plastic button that your throttle cable hooks into. I get asked all the time about where you can buy this at. This part was never made separately by Briggs. They never, if you look on the parts manual, there is no part number for it or anything. So if this breaks, you're either going to have to epoxy it, JB weld it, or you have to replace the whole throttle bracket assembly. It's crazy like that. Well, I don't know why they did that for. It's just the way they, they made it. And that's on all of the Briggs engines, even the ones they're making today. They're still like that. I don't never did understand that. But to sum it up, I'll say these are a really good carburetor. They can be stubborn and picky, and they're known for float leaking. They're known for float problems uh, or needle valve problems, and also where your nozzle screws into it, into the body of the carburetor. It's a flange fitting there, like a tapered fitting, and it's supposed to go inside there. You got to kind of work with it to get it to seat in, kind of like almost like lapping a valve almost. If you don't do that, it's going to let gas constantly flow, and you'll think it's the float problem. Here, it's actually that problem. I've talked about that. I got a whole video on just just on how to clean or rebuild this type of carburetor. So if you haven't seen that, you might want to check it out. But uh, yeah, that's about all I'm going to show in this video, and hopefully, I answered all your questions on how to adjust it. I know I didn't go into a whole lot of detail, but it's hard to talk with the engine running on the video but uh, you just gotta find the sweet spot on both screws that's the easiest way to say it but uh, sometimes it can be picky it just depends on the motor and a lot of times you know you don't think what you turn will make a difference here it does you know like a sixteenth of a turn on that screw would be what you would think a half turn would do sometimes it just depends on the carburetor but, well, guys, if you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.